Hi guys, how you doing? My name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. We are well into Thursday evening. So, I'm on my own. I've got no help and support. Not that I, 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 I'm okay by that. I've, I've, it's been like that since I was a kid. So it, it's no, no different. At least I can say no. I can say no. When an adult is abusing me, I can turn around and say no. When I was a kid, I couldn't turn around and say no. But at least I can now. Right? What these people need to learn, they need to learn, is, right, they can't do that to me anymore. They won't do that to me anymore. And if they do, they'll see what happens. No violence. But they'll see what happens if they try to do things to me. I've been free of this sexual abuse for six years now. Six whole years free from men abusing me. And some women. Six years. And I intend to keep it that way. I'm not a hoe. I have not had a relationship in six years. You can count. You do know your maths and English, right? Six years free of being used and manipulated by men and women into doing things that I don't want to do. And there are women involved in it, right? Getting their partners to do things to me and thinking it's funny. There's females involved in it. So I went out for a walk this afternoon and I've got a bad foot, I've got a sprained ankle. Really I should be keeping off the sprained foot but I live by myself and I have a dog to take for a walk, right? And I treated Max to a walk around the field. It did bloody hurt but I, you know, I let him off the lead for once. I won't be doing that every day, just once in a while. I haven't been on that field all the way around for ages. Um, so I went out this afternoon and there was this couple with a curly-haired brown dog. It looked like a teddy bear on a lead. Lovely dog, looked like a fluffy teddy bear. And, and it was going up on its lead and it was leaning over towards, towards me and Max. And not a smile on the faces, not a smile, not, you know, it doesn't hurt to smile and say, oh, you know, no, it looked at me as if, like, fuck off. Looked at me as if, like, mm, couldn't care less. I'm used to that. Because I'm an older woman now, I mean, you've got people in their 20s, like, they look at some of them, not all of them, look at you as if you're an old fuddy-duddy. Oh, the phone's going off. Who could that possibly be? Oh, it's my mother, Jennifer. Of course it is. My mum. Who else keeps ringing the bloody phone? Um, so... After this dog got on its hind legs and was going that, like that, the way he pulled it off, they turned their heads around, they walked off. I walked onto the field and I heard one of the builders shout, Pratt, Pratt, which is a pussy, a fanny. Men call a woman's vagina a Pratt, don't they? So someone shouted off the builder's building area, Pratt. I heard it. I'm a woman and I've got men treating me like I'm a bloke. Simpleton, prat. So I just walked around the field solitary by myself and there was one man with a bald head, completely bald head. And that was it. And then I walked home and I'm in my flat now by myself. And up until now I've been editing and doing videos on TikTok. I've been putting videos onto my YouTube, I've soaked my foot in Epsom salts and I looked at the exercises I was given to my email address 
so I've got to press play and watch a video and I've got to exercise my ankle exercise it like turn it round and round and round and put the feet up and down sounds like he's dropped something on the ceiling upstairs or he's falling down drunk I don't know what the just boinks on the ceiling boing I hear he was coughing earlier they were coughing in Aldi just trying to get a reaction out of me I think it's funny I'm telling you a sprained ankle is not funny it's very painful she was talking about an air compression boot and I've just looked on Temu I'll get one myself you know you could get a splint for your for your foot I'll get one myself they're about they range from 12 to 44 pounds a splint for your foot when you've sprained your ankle or, or broken it I'll get one myself I've rubbed ibuprofen gel in my ankle i've still got that some of that left my mum's got a chemist right up the road from her i might go in there hobble up to the chemist she's got a chemist up there i ask them what's good for uh they've got any pain relieving gel for a bad ankle because the doctor would not give me anything the other post i got today was british gas and they're, they're advising me to uh, go to the ombudsman for a complaint against British Gas. So the energy ombudsman is PO Box 966, Warrington, WA4 9DF. And it's 0330-440-1624. Now I'm wondering if this is the Ripley number. Alexa, where is Warrington? Warrington is a town in the northwestern part of England. It is located 16.5 miles east of Liverpool, England. Oh, it's, it's east of Liverpool, Warrington. 8am to 8pm Monday to Friday and 9am 1pm Saturday. Or you can email them. Or go to the website. So British Gas themselves are advising me to take my complaint up with the Ombudsman. Which I did when I first had my child taken away from me. Didn't I? And those stupid solicitors that were supposed to be on my side. And they weren't on my side at all. Because none of those solicitors fought my case. I spent five or six years trying to get my child back through various bogus, useless solicitors. What was one of their names? Sandra Tadhunter. And what was my solicitor up in London? Flora Grossman. Flora Grossman. Flora Grossman. Sandra Tadhunter, well, I don't know, I don't think they're practising anymore, you know. Flora Grossman was my solicitor in 2005 or six, and um, Sandra Tadhunter, about 2008, 9, 10, we're in 2023 now, and my son is now 18 years old. And it doesn't really matter anyway, does it? So I've just been out the side this evening. As soon as I go out my front door, eh, can hear it. Eh. Seriously. So I went down the, down into the lift. My foot is throbbing. Went outside the back of the flats there's a guy on his mobile hello 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 <laughs> and i walk down the bottom turn around common creek wolf i've got a bad foot there's people walking on the path like right three abreast so i walked on the grass walked off the grass walked down the path walked down where i live 
driven back home again because I'm supposed to be visiting my mother tomorrow. Jennifer Trower. My name is Janestra Trower, or was originally. So I'm seeing my mum, Jennifer, tomorrow. And every time, I, before, the day before I'm due up to see my mother, it seems like everybody is trying to make me act mad and mental. And I'm not. My dad, Derek Trower, has been dead for two years. He died of a sudden death, a heart attack. He just dropped dead, just like that. But my mother was there with him when he died. He wasn't alone. He died right in front of my mum. For people living by themselves, and I'm not being macabre, but some people go unnoticed for four weeks or more. Because the world we live in today is very antisocial. Neighbours don't fucking give a shit about each other. It's everybody for themselves. Not everybody. There are still nice people about. Don't get me wrong. But people can be undiscovered, dead in their flats or accommodation for over four weeks. I don't have a postman that comes right up to my doorstep. I don't have milk delivered to my door. So, you know what I mean? All I get is my son sometimes ringing me on the phone and that's, that's not all the time. So, I mean, life is like this. When they, when they cover up abuse, when they entrap you in your own home to hide what they've been doing, my dad died. He hadn't visited the hospital for two years. He had a serious heart condition and the doctor hadn't done anything for two years. That is why he had an autopsy. That's why they cut my father's body open to see what he died of. It's a whole massive cover-up. Even though he was bad, he would have been a witness, you see. He was a witness. The police were about to question my father and he suddenly drops dead. My sister died. She was speaking. She died suddenly. I never got to see my brother. Right? So containing somebody to keep their dirty secrets all of them. I'm not ha allowed to live a proper life. I can't make friends because I might tell somebody. I can't have a boyfriend because I might tell him. It's all right to be a hoe, you know, men abusing me because they don't stay long enough to speak to me, do they? Do they? So guys, I have to live a solitary life. I have to live alone so that their dirty secrets don't come out. I hope you get an idea of when I go shopping, they, the, the, some of the people are dressed in replicas of my clothing. It's not madness. I've actually taped a woman in almost exactly the same clothes that I'm bloody wearing. And the overweight lady in the doctor's surgery with what looks like my colour hair sat next to me. You telling me? Somebody's sense of humour, it's certainly not mine. I, 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 it's been going on since I came down here in 2008. It was going on in Gloucestershire. It's probably been going on since I was a kid. 
and I didn't even know it when I was shouted at in the street at nine years old. People mouthing at me when I was nine or what are you smiling at? I used to burst into tears. I was seven, eight or nine and somebody would go, what are you staring at? Because I was smiling and I was happy. And then I started crying. Because an abusive adult had shouted at a, a child. When is this going to stop? I'd, my dad would abuse me. I'd go outside and do some shopping for my mum. And then I'd get shouted at in the street by adults. One of them followed me all the round, around up Sydenham High Street, shouting at me. Abusing a child verbally in the street. No one did anything. And by the time I was about 11 or 12, I'd had enough of seeing fake police come out to my mum when, when my dad had given her a beating to know that the police are fucking useless. I used to hear my mum say, oh, he's, you know, he's done this, he's done that. And the police would walk out and then my dad would give my mum a good hiding after the police had left in front of me. I, I don't, I don't, look, life is short, right? Don't attack me because I'm a fucking victim. Didn't have the guts to fucking go up to my father and question him, did you? But you attack me, right? Laugh at me, make fucking noises like a fucking got something stuck up your bottom. Ooh. You ought to look at some of these people doing ridiculous things, ought to look at themselves. How ridiculous you look. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I should take my phones up to my mum's tomorrow and keep doing it and proving you to you it's not me. Right? They are hiding abuse because they are scared. It's been going on for ages and a lot of them would go to prison. You're not allowed to listen to people's conversations. You're not allowed to be um crawl and torture someone in their their own home or otherwise that's it's torture and they're getting away with it by saying people are mad right carry on and i'll carry on exposing the bloody lot of you in shops out of shops doctors everywhere even in churches churches See you later.